Uh, my name is Jack Stilliger, and I'm the director of programming here. Ooh. Oh, good. Caroline is going to document um, you wonderful people in the chairs right now because um, we've realized we have a um, minimal supply of people in seats inside of our micro cinema for photos. Um, well, I wanted to say welcome, and uh, I don't know how many of you have been here before, and how many of you it's, it, it's your first time at Squeaky Wheel. Is there anybody who this is their first time? First time, yeah. Wow! Here. Yeah. Wow! And I, yes, I remember meeting you earlier. Okay, that's a large bunch of people. And um, well, I should just give you an overview of what we do here. We are a media arts center, and we obviously have a micro cinema where we show independent films. But in the back, we also have a workshop lab, and then we also do offsite workshops in the community um, where people learn how to um, do hands-on filmmaking or video production. Um, also, uh, more analog means of, of video making. So, um, for instance, Goda, the person at the bar over there, she teaches zoetrope and thaumatrope workshops, and um, that's with a record player in it. It's um, kind of like an archaic form of animation. Um, so we teach kids how to do that, so they learn a little bit about how the how the eye works and how still images work together to create a uh, moving image. So. Um, we do things like that. Um, we have a workshop for sure, and that's that's up, up in the front. Um, so if you guys are interested in our workshops, you can grab that. We also have um, a calendar that has some of our upcoming events here in the micro cinema. Um, so I just wanted to give a little overview of what we have coming up in case you want to come back. Um, tomorrow at the Cockelli's, we are doing a thaumatrope workshop and a table at the Small Press Book Fair which is a large event and it has to do with a lot of zinesters and people who have small publications and it's a really great time to go pick some great presents out for your friends. Um, so that's fun. That's from 12 to 6 and it's called the Small Press Book Fair. Uh, Where? And it's, Where? It's at, in the Porter Carpelli's Museum and that's a manuscript museum. Mm -hmm. Have you been there before? Uh, no. It's a wonderful place. So it's a free event so you could just stop in. It's kind of like an expo um, and you also get a chance to hear some live poetry readings. So I suggest checking that out. We have, we have postcards right over on that table, too, that you can grab if you wanted to know more about that. And then um, we have a deadline coming up for our Buffalo Youth Media Institute, and that is a summer intensive program for young aspiring filmmakers. And um, the application deadline comes up on March 30th, so if you know anybody in high school who wants to learn filmmaking, they'll, they'll make a whole entire film this summer on a specific theme, which has to do with the downtown Buffalo. So um, that's a really good opportunity. All that information is on our website. And that's also a free summer program. And upstairs and downstairs, we have two gallery installations by our, re by our um, regional artists and residents. And so I hope you guys get a chance to check those out. And coming up on April 6th, we have another documentary in here. And it's about metal typeface printmaking. And it's called Making Faces. And that's by one of our um, local filmmakers. His name's Richard Kegler. He's the co-founder of Winnie Back, the Western New York Book Arts Center, and he's also the co-founder of P22. It's a type foundry. So um, that's going to be a very special event for him here. So he's going to do a Q&A about his first feature-length film, and the topic is very interesting too. So um, on that note, we'll get to the screening at hand, which is Cultures of Resistance. And um, we've been really excited to, to bring her in. And I want to thank Burning Books for being here to co-present the screening. Um, so Ayara Lee is the filmmaker of Cultures of Resistance, which is actually, Cultures of Resistance is actually a foundation, but this is the feature film. Um, that kind of gives a good overview of the kind of works that, that they do make. They have a make war, not make war, not <laughs> make war. Make, make anything else but war. <laughs> yeah. Flip that around, make <laughs> films, not war. Um, much better, much nicer. Um, so Arthur Phillips is a representative of the Cultures of Resistance Foundation. So he will do a Skype presentation after the film. And um, I wanted to just read a little bit about Ayara Lee for, for a minute, in case you guys aren't familiar with her. Um, she is a Brazilian Korean filmmaker. She's an activist. And um, she's the founder of the Cultures of Resistance Foundation and she promotes global solidarity and supports peace with justice projects. And um, she's working on a, a variety of initiatives, and she's part of the President's Council of the International Crisis Group and the Council of Advisors of the National Geographic Society. 
And she's also worked on a couple other feature length films. And those, let me give you the names of those. There's Synthetic Pleasures and <coughs> Modulations. And a while back ago, she was part of the um, Gaza Freedom Flotilla, which was, um, well, it was something that happened during the Egyptian, maybe you might want to talk about this, um, at, at one point um, during during um, that movement, there, there was a blockade to bring in humanitarian efforts to Gaza, to these people, and she was part of um, a movement that was bringing in aid that got raided by um, some people from Israel, and during that time there was some deaths of about nine activists, and she was on the boat when it got raided, and so she has some pretty notable footage of that attack. So she, she's, this kind of, she's a woman who's been in the ring, and she's been using media to alert people and inform people of, about this thing. So it's a really good example of that. Um, so that's why we brought it in here. And then we um, wanted Burning Books to kind of talk about it also, because it's a really good example of how organizing um, can, can bring forth change. So I'll let you take it from here. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Nate. We're from Burning Books. Teresa's in the back. And uh, thank you for being here. Uh, so yeah, we, uh, we have a bookstore over on the west side and we focus uh, primarily and specifically on, uh, uh, we call it freedom struggle. People who uh, work towards, towards change through all different means. And um, that's our focus. If you come in there, we have posters and DVDs and CDs and uh, t-shirts and and books, and they're all related to people struggling for the freedom, whether it be on environmental issues, uh, women's rights, uh, slavery, uh, globalization, um, statehood rights, uh, you know, Palestine. Uh, they're all they're all different avenues of getting to uh, whether people are making music, or whether people are making art, or whether people are writing a book. They're all ways, and that people are using their energy in different forms to try to bring about freedom, and. Um, and so, what, and you know, it's a very, I, and we, we at first, we, uh, we're all do art on the side, but not, it's not our major uh, thing. So we always should have someone else come up and talk, uh, because there's a lot of people who do really great art uh, in the community who further the struggle. And I guess like art just serves, and song, it's like, it, it keeps our own history. Um, and throughout generations, you know, there's, and it keeps a culture, like a culture of resistance, like the labor unions, how that songs and artwork, um, you know the slaves uh, had had in their songs that they would have uh, messages on how to, when to escape, and um, it's like a long history of that. And uh, I guess uh, resistance, cultures of resistance, in resisting. Um, one thing I, I noticed about the film, which does a really good job of explaining the economic factors onto what uh, a lot of these hardships are created from, and um, a couple of them just in, in it, um, like they sometimes they don't they don't have enough time in the movie to go into every specific thing, but. They have like the, the Rwanda event, the genocide, and they don't go into, which they didn't have time to, uh, but uh, Rwanda, the Tutsis and the Hutu, they, at, that was a creation uh, of two ethnic groups by the Belgium and German forces back in the early 1900s during the colonialism, and they forced, forced them to have, take ID cards, and they made the one minority, the Tutsi, the leading, uh, more wealthy group in the Hutu, the majority uh, conquered sort of uh, lower class. And it was such a non-existent thing that the Tutsi who got poor would go to the Hutu and the Hutu who were, got wealthy would go to the Tutsi. And then during the genocide, if you had a Tutsi uh, pass that the, the Belgium would force you to, to, to have, and that, that card system continued up until those days, it was like a death, death warrant on you. Um, so a lot of these ethnic, and it's, and it's for control of resources um, and, and, you know, power. And like, for example, the Congo, again, they show this in here and it's like all destabilized. And I guess my main point is that a, a lot, like, in, in the, a lot of history and thing, it's, it's, it's interesting to fi figure it all out and to get into it. And a lot of these, you know, it's, people can think, oh, like, oh, it's just human nature that all these conflicts happen. But a lot of them have real roots in economic interests and real players. Um, like within imperial powers that have real interest in creating divisions and people fighting and, um, and there is a lot of unity out there. Uh, we have a lot of books about what has happened and um, yeah, even like, uh, and again, they go most of that 
he's in Iran, and they say they, the CIA took him out, which is true, but it's because he was, he was nationalizing a lot of the uh, oil wells and their resources to use for their own country instead of having Western powers do that. And um, so that brings me back to my last point, which is uh, Alex, we have uh, Alex me I'd like to uh, highlight as a local artist. Uh, he, he, has, he does a lot of, uh, with the Bloodthirsty Vegans, and he has a song called Class War. And, uh, and it goes through a lot of the thing, same things, and it's very similar. And yeah, this uh, art and and music, like anything, um, can be used to do really powerful things if you choose to use it in that context. And uh, and a lot of people do around here, and I approve. And so, yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah.